We are tracking the advance of Cyclone Pileen to, towards the eastern coast of India. Now it's been described as possibly the biggest cyclone to ever hit the country. Parallels are being drawn with the super cyclone of 2009. Now Pileen is hurtling towards Gopalpur on sea in Odisha. It's about 40 kilometers away at this point. Uh, the Met Department has said it's going to make landfall between 6 and 8 this evening. Uh, evacuations have been taking place on a, on a war footing. One of the biggest operations ever. That's what we are being told by the National Disaster Management Agency. About 5 lakh people at least have been evacuated from coastal towns and villages. Many of them forcibly refusing to leave their homes. Our reporters have been meeting all kinds of people who live in... Uh, Pakka structures who say they are not going to leave their homes, they want relief supplies to come to them, not actually uh, taking into account the fact that uh, with the kind of damage such heavy winds will uh, uh, unleash on, the, on those towns, uh, they will not be able to access these relief supplies as easily and hence are being asked to move towards shelters. Let's take a look at how this... Um, Cyclone has been moving right now. As we said, it is the, that image that you can see behind me is a live satellite image at this point in time of just where that cyclone is in uh, relation to uh, the coastline. The eye of the storm, that extremely tiny pinhole that you can see in the center of the vortex of the wind gusts is the eye of the storm. That is what is going to hit Kopalpur and see they're expecting winds of at least 200 kilometers per hour, if not more. Let's not forget the Met Department is classifying this as a very severe cyclonic storm at this point in time. Uh, that pink line is the coast coastline that you can see off uh, the eastern coast of India. A very severe cyclonic storm. It will stay that way for at least six hours before it drops some intensity to become a severe cyclonic storm and then further down, downgraded by the Met Department. But that won't happen until tomorrow morning. The kind of havoc it could wreak in its path uh, is something that everybody is extremely nervous about and concerned about. Relief supplies and materials in place in uh, district headquarters, state capitals, evacuations, as we said, have taken place already. Five lakh people plus have been asked to move to a higher ground where inundation is also already happening in parts of northern Andhra Pradesh and Orissa. Well, the areas that we are reporting as critical likely to be the hardest hit. Srikakulam in northern Andhra Pradesh, uh, the Srikakulam district, in fact, all across the coastal areas over there. In Orissa, Ganjam, that's where Gopalpur is, where it is expected to first make landfall. Puri, Khorda and Jagat Singhpur as well amongst the areas that are being watched extremely, extremely closely at this point. Well, my colleagues Anchal Vora from Orissa and Maya Sharma from Andhra Pradesh are now joining me. Uh, Anchal, let's go across to you first because the area where you are is uh, very close to Gopalpur on sea, which is expected to be where the storm first makes landfall. Uh, th the last time we spoke to you, wind gusts had already begun uh, at, at very high speeds. What's happening around you right now? Well, Maya, as we speak, I'm pretty much being slapped by the wind and that is when I'm at least 20 kilometers away from Gopalpur Beach. We are in Brahmapur right now, which is about 20 kilometers away in the safety of a hotel and really just standing on the street. Here, we are being slapped by the wind. We don't know exactly what speed the wind is blowing at, but about two hours ago, it was at 135 and right now, standing here, we can feel the difference. Having said that, through our uh, drives around Ganjam district today, we have seen electric poles that have fallen on the streets. We've seen many trees that have. So you can imagine what the situation is going to be tomorrow. Now let's say it does turn out to be a very severe cyclone. Then the biggest worry is going to be those people who have not taken shelter in one of those safe uh, cyclone shelters that the government had set up. Now because these areas, you know, coastal areas, our frequent visitors of cyclones, maybe not so severe ones, but our, do get cyclones. The government have put up some uh, a sort of uh, pakka structures. They call them the cyclone shelters. Uh, so if water hits these shelters and water, you know, sort of, there are pillars under these structures, stand on pillars, so water could go underneath and people could be on first 
or the second floor that keeps these people safe. But now many buildings like the schools and other buildings have also been turned into these. But we have seen many people still on the streets calling their houses pakka structures and not moving into these safe shelters. Now, about an hour and a half ago, I was at the Gopalpur beach. Let's have a look and see what the beach felt like at least uh, uh, 90 minutes ago. Well, it's barely possible for me to stand straight now. Last we know, the wind is blowing at 135 kilometers per hour on our way to the Gopalpur beach late this afternoon. We've seen many trees on the ground. In a matter of hours now, when Cyclone Pali hits these shores, now 3 lakh people have been evacuated just in the state of Orissa. That perhaps is the biggest evacuation exercise that has taken place in this country in recent times. The fear of the state and of the people in the state is, is this going to be worst of nature that this country has seen in a long time? Reporting from Gopalpur Beach, which is expected to be the center of the storm, with camera person Habib, Anchal Bora, NDTV. Well, uh, that is when I was at the Gopalpur beach and you would be surprised to know that this is before the uh, cyclone Philene has hit uh, the shores really. We were there, while we were there, we were informed by a few people that some of the fishermen villages are already uh, coming underwater, very close to the point that we were at. So then we walked to that spot and met a couple of young boys who told us that the, some of the villages where the fishermen live are actually underwater. We also saw many fishermen who were trying to save their boats. Let's have a look. Right, uh, fairly dramatic pictures there from Anchal. We're also being joined by Shudhiranjan Sen from Bhuvaneshwar as well, the state capital. Now, uh, Shudhiranjan, Anchal is reporting from uh, 20 kilometers away from Gopalpur on sea where uh, Pailin is expected to make landfall. Uh, villagers still refusing to uh, be taken to safety shelters. Many of them arguing with authorities, saying they'd rather have relief supplies come to them than actually go the other way around. Uh, how is the state government managing this situation? Uh, we've talked about relief teams also being flown in uh, to the state capital. Give us a sense of what efforts are underway. Well, well to begin with, Maya, to the, uh, to the first question that you asked about, you know, some people refusing. In fact, a couple of hours ago, I had met the Special Relief Commissioner, Mr. Sahu, uh, Mr. Mahapatra, I'm sorry. And, and in fact, this is in, in exactly what he had said, that there were some pockets of resistance people are refusing to come out of their homes and uh, you know repeatedly uh, that's what I've even, I at least I was told that the state government has been telling them it's only for 12 hours that you need to leave and they have used he said that we were forced to use force in some places to uh, to to vacate uh, to ask people to vacate and uh, and evacuate them to some you know to, to, to safer areas that's one 
uh, on the issue of the relief operations that is there first what we have been told out here at least from Bhuvaneshwar is that about four lakh people that's the claim of the state that four lakh people have already been evacuated that was till about 2 30 in the afternoon uh, the evacuation operations well coming uh, were coming down uh, you know com uh, coming to an end uh, so they said that about tw four, uh, 4 lakh people evacuated from all the seven districts mainly from Ganjam uh, Ganjam being the, the primary uh, the primarily the main district from people have where from where people have been evacuated on the issue of, of uh, relief and rescue the primary effort uh, uh, as per the claims of the state is to save lives that's what they're saying and also uh, you know after the the, the uh, storm goes by they're saying we are trying or we will try to restore power we'll try to restore the roads within 12 hours so that teams can move in as early as possible with the relief material and you know and, and get to work that is that is what the plan of the state is as of now maya right Shri ranjan stay with us maya sharma is, um, uh, is also with us from vishakhapatnam now um, maya you are at the southern a tip, so to speak, of the the range that Cyclone Pylon is expected to have over land. Um, it, the, as we are talking about, the eye of the storm meant to make landfall at Gopalpur on sea or much further south than Gopalpur. Nonetheless, people have been evacuated from around you as well. What's the situation in Vizag? That is right. Yes, Vishakhapatnam is hoping to avoid the worst of the brunt of this storm. It is, as you said, at the southernmost range of the cyclone's impact as estimated right now. But it is feeling the impact. 40,000 people have been evacuated from this district alone. That is what we were told in the morning. The number might have gone up now. I can just show you a bit also of how rough the sea is right now. The sea is definitely rougher than it normally is. Locals have told us that it's coming in much further, much closer than it normally does. Now, this is the Ramakrishna Beach, a very popular, very popular tourist resort right in the center of the town of Vishakhapatnam. It has been closed to the public now. They were there in the morning. Families were there. Children were there. But they were sent away by police. And right now, this evening, it has been closed to the public. No vehicles are being allowed on the road. The beach road, which actually passes it a few meters above, just behind the camera. So no vehicles allowed. No public allowed as a precautionary measure. The wind is certainly building up. It hasn't rained much all day, but a few drops starting now, looking perhaps like a bit of rain, but certainly not the kind of rain and gusts of winds we are seeing further up the coast in Orissa. But windier now, the sea is rougher. You can know that something is going on in that magnificent sea behind me. You know that there is something going on. And wind, as you can see, certainly picking up right now. It is much faster than it was just a few minutes ago.